All right, brand new episode has been added. So episode two, all right? You guys ready? Bring, bring. Hello? This is Maya. Oh, no, this is Mia. She's Mia. Hello, hello, Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Is this like her sister? They're Maya and... Maya and Mia? Well, it's lonely and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. It's been great. I finally get used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yes, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore. So okay, so it is a girl, so she should like have a British accent too. Otherwise, that's weird. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't taking, isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? That evidence then? Hmm. Well, it's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say, 9 o'clock, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like, burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit, we'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Beep! Conversation recorded September 5, 9.27am. That's kind of strange. 8:57 p.m. Faye and co law and co law offices. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine, the papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Oh ho, you are not con cogniferous, cogniferous. Of my, you are not cogniferous of my background. I have never heard that word before, but I love it. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Ho oh, oh. ho. My dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry, but I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. Dude! I hate all of you. I hate all of you. <laughs> Fucking everyone who's like, eh, you probably shouldn't cake her. Like, like, oh man, I'm thinking she's gonna be alive at least. I get to make a decision at least. And then you have fucking View who's like, oh no, dude, don't listen to them. You should fucking cake her, man. Really. Y'all dirty, man. <laughs> Y'all are dirty. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm late. Late at 9 p.m.? Jesus Christ. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so, uh, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Oh, what? I didn't know I'd have to do something. Sis! Someone's there. Chief! Chief? CHIEF! I gotta work on my anime stream more. It's not very good. Who are you? The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. There's no blood. Her body was still warm. I could feel, feel it when I went... I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Till finally she was cold. 
Chief. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this, but if there's any clues here. She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. Thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Thinker added to the court record. Hmm. There's some glass shards in the chief's body. Must be pieces of glass. Of the glass uh, light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. A piece of paper. Must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? A word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Maya? Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police. Find out what the girls that girl was doing. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Oh, she's right there. Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya Faye? Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt? I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. She seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I want to know. Um, excuse me, can you tell me what happened? I came in. The room was dark. And sis, sis. She was already dead. So you're the chief's sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting this late at night? Yes, she said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes. It was that clock. It was the thinker. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That, that's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please. Please, just calm down. Why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. I better hurry up and call the police. Um, about the thinker. Thinker, that was... Oh, Sis! We probably shouldn't have asked her about the murder weapon. <laughs> Fair. Um, okay. Uh... You normally sit at the reception the reception desk? Why? You were her assistant. You're a freaking attorney. Right. I better call the police. That's funny. You the screws on the receiver are missing. Looks like someone's halfway through taking it apart. Police! Please come quick! What? What was that? What? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Ha! <laughs> Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoes, see? Just a little on the nose. This fucking guy. All right, I gotta change my. I gotta change the voice. Actually, Gumshoe. What an odd name. Ah, we received a report from the building across the way. See, got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have. Nah. Whoa. Excuse me. Ig this word Maya here would mean anything to you? Um, that that's my name. What? The victim drew this hair this hair note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Allegedly. Killer, I'm not Case closed, you're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What?
Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, and I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to, t I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Oh, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh, it's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Oh my god. I feel so bad for her. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Actually, me being your attorney in this situation is incredibly dubious because I was a witness to the aftermath of the situation. And I would be shocked if a judge actually allowed me to be your attorney in this case. But we can give it the old college try. First things first, I better get her cheered up. Yeah, of course I, yeah, of course I will. Cheer up. Really? Whoa, did I say the wrong thing? She looks sadder now. Because <laughs> you're a piece of shit, dirty. <laughs> she has no confidence in you. Um, what? what's wrong? You don't think I can do it? No, no one could. Who would believe me? Even you when you found me in the office. Which should be a reason why you can't actually represent me. You looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It's, it's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Wow, she got really happy all of a sudden. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on the edge of the whole time. It's been a while. Ah, so he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear to the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. That normally, the evil is considered the defendants, and you want to be the prosecutor in that situation. But I guess if you see the prosecutors as evil, then yes, that would also work. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who, who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. God damn! She's all happy like, that's what she said. That I should never in a million years have you represent me at this moment. At this very moment. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. If you want to be found guilty, I mean, hire me. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. But I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium in training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Good thing you didn't say that out loud. So you're an acolyte, a uh, medium in training. That's right. The Fey family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fey family. So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. Wow, she's so hyped. She left the mountain to follow. She left the mountain to follow her career. She said, "The powers were first class too." I had no idea. Wait, what? So you're a real, honest to goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact Mia's spirit then? We can just ask her who killed. Hey, you know, Maya, if you calm the fuck down, just go and contact your dead sister soul and she can tell you exactly what happened. You know, the sister that was just killed yesterday? You can try. So this is what you would have to do. Lay the foundation of why she's an expert in her field. And then explain what she heard from a spirit. 
which would be... <laughs> that's gotta be hearsay. Oh, the spirit told me this is how she was murdered. That's gotta be hearsay, right? So there's two big problems with that. <laughs> you can try, but any good attorney's just gonna object that the judge doesn't just outright tell you, um... No. I... I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that'd be too easy. Did you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in the case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her, her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone, which they let me have and while I'm in holding for some reason. You recorded it. Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. So you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my... No shit! And he should have known that already. Sorry. No, don't apologize. I'm an idiot and should have known that it was probably taken from you. Oh, right, of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. I his memo added to the court record. Um, huh? Something on the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I would say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. Trials tomorrow... I have to check my glasses. I have to actually check my glasses to make sure I am reading that correctly. Yep, the trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Assuming in the morning, the day after they took her into custody. Even a speedy trial isn't the next fucking day. Mostly because people need time to fucking prepare a defense. Then you have motions in limine, which, is, which are like, Motions to suppress evidence that they believe were, um, uh, was improperly gathered or legally gathered. All that stuff would happen before the actual trial because you don't, you don't actually want to let any of that evidence get presented to the jury and put, potentially taint them and then try to argue that it shouldn't be allowed because even if the judge were to say, all right, jury, you are to disregard that evidence. Think about it. Are you really going to be able to completely disregard that evidence, even with those instructions? Probably not. What, tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if, what if this guy refuses? They tell me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until four o'clock this afternoon. Smile. And visiting arrows are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Grossberg Law Offices. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, that inspires confidence. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. He couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. <laughs> An oil painting so thick it's giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either for that matter, but I'm tss. Wait, what else are we supposed to do? Go talk to her and be like, hey, we couldn't find him. Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. I guess go back here. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for the crews. 
Hey, you there, this is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry, don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. How can anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... Suede shoes. Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. And I'm attorney right to you, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, get the name right. And don't go call me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. I I yes, sir. Be right there. Um, hum. You're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you'd better do it quick. Whew. Thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. About Miss Faye. Do you have an autopsy? Mm. You want to know the results, eh? Now, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. All right, all right. You didn't see the report, but that's all. Death was instantaneous. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? A city's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Ooh, I know about Edgeworth. Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth. I'm pretty sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, yeah. Yeah, I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't, doesn't feel pain, doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, oh, don't talk about it that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. What? On average, you go if you're if you complete college in four years, go to law school for three years. The earliest you're gonna become an attorney is 25. That's assuming you pass the bar right away. So, he must have gotten to college at like, what? Just take an arbitrary guess here. 15, three years of college, two years of law school because he finished everything quick, even quicker than that. I guess I don't know what the law school setup is like in Japan. Of course, there are rumors of back alley de deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth, Edgeworth hates crime with almost an abnormal passion. Never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. You see Maya, Maya Faye's cell phone. Oh, that? I have that. You think you could give it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Why? The prosecution would have to give it to you anyways if you asked. I guess I just think differently, like, yeah, you're gonna have to hand that over to me at some point anyway so that I can examine it, so why not just do it right now? What type of lawyer? Um, well, right now, it's, uh, a lot of immigration. Um, before it was family, like, divorce, child, uh, custody, child protective services, uh, and then immigration... And then I also do contracts, uh, entertainment. Um, but yeah, I cut out all the family stuff because that's that just started getting to me. It's no, not not a good time. Not a good time. I don't know. It's just you know, detective. Nope, I don't nothing. I don't nothing, pal. A cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Yeah, one of the main, one of my main areas. Uh, you're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal, I already checked all the numbers in a memory. Impressive, you're quite the detective. Huh? Oh, here, you can have the phone back. There are days vicious call records in there, after all. Seems you didn't notice the recorded conversations. You all done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. 
I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyways, you'd better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Except that you just told me her name. Haha. <laughs> so you've seen her so you've sent her home already then? Aha! She's not to go outside the room until the trial. Well, she's still in the hotel across the way. Well, I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to go pay a visit to Miss May. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. Hello there, handsome. Hi, um, smooth, right? Real smooth. Ooh, I should give her Primrose's voice. You're the lawyer, right? Aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Tee <laughs> Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Oh, yeah, you. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fang and Co. Law Office's building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. Somebody must be staying with her. That must be the information. Oop, what's this? Hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? No touching. Oh my god, that face. Her eyes twitching. <laughs> oh, bad boy. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. You think you can tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observe? Incident? You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big... vocabulary. Okay. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm? That badge on your collar. Oh, so you're a lawyer, you know? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one can get in touch with you and you are in, like, this gigantic fucking office and have this solid gold lighter? Something that matter. You would see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. Call me boy. What do you want? Oh, wait. That's attorney boy to you, sir. Uh, well, actually, sir, it's about Maya. Maya Faye. Uh, yes. Maya Faye. Uh, go on. Why the strange reaction? You know, I know he's supposed to be, like, a dick for that, but... Taking a case on a day's notice is ridiculous. And should not be expected of anybody. It's not impossible, but very close. Wait a second. How do you know the trial was tomorrow? Uh, uh, anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take the case. Um, uh, um, well, you see, it's just, I'm busy, you see. But the client is, why, is, is Mia Faye's sister. Uh, uh, Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Please not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What? What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. 
But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt would take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? That's quite a painting. Aha, uh -huh, you noticed! It's my pride and joy. Impressive, is it? Well, is it? The color of the sky, the shoe of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. Sucks. How'd you know me a fave? We worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. During my chase, she's in the blink of an eye. She left one day quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. Hiya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well. Well, see, to be honest, I really don't think you should use that guy. He doesn't, didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. God, what a liar. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? No. I see. I've been abandoned then. Could you tell me more about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. I've been doing the last... What, all I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. Go ahead and hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Harry made. Larry. Practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9 o'clock. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. Don't know. So she could still be alive? The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot, a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, a family was involved in an incident. There was a man and he, he, he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer and she left for the mountain. So you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent or I'd lose my powers. I feel bad for her all by herself on that mountain. About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spiritual medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow. My thoughts exactly. So what happened? The case was solved, we thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police's consultation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it, leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. <laughs> she, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. Whites. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White? Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lo lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? I made up my mind. I'm going to tell the judge that I'm going to attempt to defend you whether you want me to or not. And he's probably going to tell me that A... The defendant certainly has a decision uh, as a say into who defends her or not. In fact, an absolute, not an absolute decision. But if she does not want you there, you cannot defend her. Why? Why? Well, I don't know. What. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know, I've been there a long time ago. Same hair and all. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. <gasps> Let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Ooh, she smiled at last. She smiled like several times today for some reason. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes, I trust you. 
You trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So what next? There's something that's been bugging me. What's inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look in the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Oh, God. Eyes, eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. That's sad. Thank you. Lioness, I saw that too. They said they thought these were pieces of a broken light stand. Yeah, that seems about right. I never heard of a glass light stand before this. You mean the one with my name on it? Any idea why she... Absolutely none. Um, you trust me? Yes. I trust you. Why? Don't you, don't you think I did it too? No, I don't. It's just a hunch, but... That, detec that detective thinks I did it. Ah, good evening, sir. Excuse me, you are? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment, at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, uh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities? If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah, wait. No, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come up here I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. You came back quick! I am a very sneaky, sir. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. Wright of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Now's my chance to see what's inside. <gasps> what do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? I'll just go ahead and take that. Which, you know, that's not illegal at all. There's clearly, there's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have, why would she have something like this in her room, her hotel room? There's a story behind all this, I know it. All right, I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For my sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you, you know what I meant. No, I know exactly what you meant. Oh, bellboy, still here? Uh-oh, time to scram. Look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May, in court. Oh yeah, we are in court, never mind. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edward. You son of a bitch! I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The fucking attorney right across from me! The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. I've already made up my mind as to what's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. This fucking guy. This fucking guy! Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. My name is Detective Gumchu, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Really? Because it seems like you report to somebody else who was at the scene. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well. Let me use this floor map to... Wait, this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window, here. And the cause of death? Wait, and the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object. 
The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the bodies. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Mm, Detective Gumshoe, please refrain from calling anything hard evidence. For well, that might actually taint, um, uh, well, actually, there's no jury here. It seems it's just me. Um, but yeah, I will draw my own conclusions, uh, Detective Gumshoe. Also, probably not hard evidence unless you have an actual video recording of it happening. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Mai Fei, and the lawyer, Miss Phoenix Wright. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Mai Fei. Why? We had a witness account describing account describing her. Dude, she didn't even see wait, did she see her? I thought she saw me. The witness saw Miss Maya Fei at the mo very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Oosh. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. You generally wouldn't have to throw something at your attorney, but okay. What's this? My sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony. She would bluff it and impress the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It works lots of it worked lots of times. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? Why is his, why are his eyes like <laughs> No, Your Honor, I'd like to begin my cross examination. I mean, yeah, this is what I would have done otherwise, is just kept pressing him. Okay, so let's press. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call is from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across, uh, right across from the scene of the crime. Okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. Well, she said pre press on everything, so I'm gonna press on everything. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Oh, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. That, that's pretty fast. It ain't from around here, that's for damn sure. Even for a murder. Our model this month is quick response. That's how I got there uh, before the killer got away. <laughs> Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. This isn't wrong, but geez, they're telling me to press everything, so I'm just gonna press everything. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only go get you so far. With their funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair? You just stand like, stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. But me, spiky hair? That doesn't make any sense at all. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. She said press everything! I immediately arrested, yeah, I know. Wait it, wait, did you immediately arrest her? Why is that, what's your reason? Why, we had a witness account describing her. Hold on just one second. Y yeah, yeah? If I heard if I heard correctly, you said you had arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> that was funny. Exactly. What about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Ah. Uh, well, I guess she is pink. That, that's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Of course it does. Yes. 
Ugh, fuck, I knew it wouldn't be that easy. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There is something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. I will certainly let you redo your entire testimony and not at all question your credibility. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. There's no suggesting that it was the killer. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. Uh, <laughs> the witness will refrain from asking his own questions. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, detective. Your, your honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Now, I'm going to seem like this is a big deal, but I'm definitely still not going to hold it against you. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Th to be quite frank, this should call, uh, call your credibility into question. Try to be more careful. Very well. The, de the defense may begin its cross-examination or resume its cross-examination. It. it seems like pressing has, like, no consequence. And did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. You got a bad feeling about this. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Oh, then who did write it, smarty pants? Well, who? Uh, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. The, the killer, anyone can see that. Oh, God. Oh, you're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please. Well, no, the idea would be that she's not the fucking killer. She was framed. No, that's not a good idea. Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Yeah, that was fucking dumb, Phoenix. Relax, bro. Yeah, you deserve that. That smug look? You deserve every bit of that for saying that really stupid line. <laughs> I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Ugh. Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. If death was instantaneous, how would she possibly have had time to write Maya on it? Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You said that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey? That's really what you're saying. What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, Detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This, report, this is a report from your department, Detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But, no butting your way out of this one, Detective. Order, order, the defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the, that autopsy report? When? During normal fucking discovery. Where we would all have access to this, you fucking numbskull. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate to, uh, due to a blow from a blunt object, but there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. And I'm going to be smug about it because I screwed both my 
uh, contemporary over there and the court over by not handing over this discovery beforehand. Because we all know how the court loves surprises. They don't. And this he would be admonished for the by the court for doing this. No way. Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. Oh my god, he just bowed. That is all. I actually respect that. <laughs> the absolute conceit that a person has to feel to bow after... <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I see. I care much more about plot twists than I do about procedural accuracy. Damn you, Edgeworth. No, like seriously, I would be incensed at my at, the, at my colleague if they had done that. But I wouldn't even have to say anything because the judge would be like, "What the fuck are you doing? Are you making a mockery of my courtroom? I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve." <laughs> Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> could it be because I didn't actually follow procedure? <laughs> my God, man. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe... Uh, I'm disappointed in you hand, handing him the wrong report like that. Ugh. I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. Man, throwing his own witness under the bus. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? But... Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. This fucking guy. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its ne next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? I mean, she didn't commit a crime that we know of. Oh, God. Witness, your name, please. I love how we got to the happy music now. April May at your service. Wink. Objection, Your Honor! This witness is incompetent to testify, for she believes she is a cat. I ask that a psychological evaluation be performed on her immediately to determine competency to testify in front of the court. Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. <laughs> That's very true. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Joanna. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> Nothing about this is good. He's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Not that it fucking matters because the judge is the one making the decision. This is all based on, you know, the Japanese court system. So it's different in how they, uh, you know, their procedure is different. But... I can only comment on what would happen if this was an American court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5, th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room, tee I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is, and this hotel is directly across from the fan called law offices? Hmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Not on Mr. Edgeworth's appearance. It was, it was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. 
then the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. The bad girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. If she ran, how would you have been able to see her through the window then? Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Wink. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is, it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness at- Wait! Wait, 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 wait. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I literally get the right to cross-examine. You can't just determine, oh, uh, I'm just, we're just not going to do that now. Actually, we, uh, there was some case law we were going over today at a seminar I was at, um, where, uh, a judge, there was testimony, the prosecutor called, um, the defendant to the stand for direct, and then the, uh, the defense was able to cross-examine its own client, and then after that, the guardian litem asked for directed verdict. This is actually really clever to do, but it was wrong. It, it, the asked for a directed verdict. So basically, he was like, "Your Honor, basically based on what we just heard, can you just give us a verdict?" And the judge is like, "Yes, I can." Found in favor of the prosecution. It gets appealed because the defendant's like, "Dude, my attorney has the right to." Uh, to uh, question me on direct. Now, there's something you have to understand about the American court system. Cross-examination, you see how we, when we cross-examination, we can only cross-examination based on what they say. Now, that's consistent between the two systems, as far as I understand. Uh, what they say on direct. So, for the defendant's attorney to not be able to give his own direct testimony would have been preventing them from being able to present the case in the way they wanted it to be presented. So then the court of appeals are like, bruh, judge, that was a fucking stupid decision. We're kicking it back down to the trial court. And you're going to do it again. Like a good judge instead of like a shit one. So, um, it's kind of similar to this in that they didn't, you know, if, for here it's crossed. But again, it's the right to be able to present a case. And here the judge is just going to say, oh, no, you're, you don't have the right to cross-examination. And that would not have stood up. I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Um, well, you know, I still get the opportunity. Mr. Wright, I understand you are Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. That's, uh, actually her job. Not cowardly at all. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, I'm just gonna allow a dead woman to be disparaged here and not address that at all. Will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm fucking cross-examining the witness. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Mr. Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Yeah, he definitely tipped his hand there. All right, let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. Because at this point, at this point in the case, I'm already writing down notes, like, during the direct. Say, all right, I'm going to touch on that, touch on that, touch on that. He has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. It was like no, no, out the window, you know. Yeah. Why did you do that? That, that, huh? Why? Like, why what? Why'd you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? I. That's a legitimate question. Um. No. Uh, gee. What? That's it? You can't get out of this question that easily. It's sort of, you know. Oh my. I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Let's see how far I can run with it. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your own window at that time of night. I, oh, oh God, that's where she goes crazy face. 
Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. That's not badgering the fucking witness, you dipshit! Sit down. Badgering? They're not trivial questions, though. This is a bad objection. He should be overruled. But I know what's gonna happen. The judge is gonna be like, Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, everything you say is absolutely correct. And so I'm going to oh, I'm going to sustain your objection. Mr. Wright, please move on. You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him. What the fuck? The crowd can't get into this. Get this shit out of here. Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? Okay, that's ridiculous. You looked out the window, what did you see next? The woman with long hair. That was Mia Faye? That's not what I would have asked. Slender? Sort of, well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Um, I'll, I'll press this. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure when the detective got there. Can I object to what he's saying? I can't. Okay. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's no! If Phoenix were smart, he'd say, well, yeah, that's assuming that there wasn't someone else there who then left, like a smart criminal would have. This movie certainly does make sense, and everyone in the courtroom keeps siding with her. I better not press too hard on this one. So then, tell us what happened to the victim. And the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. That's, uh, you sure the floor, the floor plan, right? This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction of that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence and the statement just now related? Yes, they are! You fucking moron. You say, you show them the floor plan and say, how is it possible from your point of view that you would have been able to see her run away from any place other than the window? And if you if she wasn't by the window initially, how'd you see her in the first place? Fine, we'll just press. She dodged, dodged what? Well, the attack. Hit her with what? How'd you know it was my client? That's not what I would ask in that situation, you numbskull! Oh, well, I, gee, first of all, she had a girl's physique. She, she was small. Who else could have been but her? Fuck it, whatever. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Can you please... Uh, God, this is stupid. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Are you fucking kidding me? Have you ever raged at Phoenix Wright? Or seen somebody rage at Phoenix Wright? Because... Everything that's going on right now is making me angry. <laughs> I know based on the Japanese court system. Maybe it's just the Japanese court system's pissing me off right now, but I know even for the Japanese court system, this is exaggerated for the sake of theater. And oh, they got, they elicited that emotion out of me. I will tell you that. The right's a dimwit too. Yes, what is the meaning? What is the meaning? Someone tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, my F.A., you would, not, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. That's actually really good, because her clothes are... No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. They're bulky and they're very unique. I'll give Phoenix credit here, this was really good. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hair looks far from normal to me. It might not actually matter, but I think this is very good. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. 
The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. Yes, we do! Dude, bring the detective back. Bring the fucking detective back. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. Oh, God. No. 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 Abort. 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 <laughs> You're basically explaining why you shouldn't be representing her at this hearing. I saw her. So did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss Mate? Why would you... Roar! <laughs> what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Those aren't trifling little details. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Okay, this is good. This is good. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. The victim dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Okay, so this is her dodging, right? Okay. Then the girl, then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, kind of statuey clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Yeah, it's actually quite startling that you knew that was a clock. Considering everyone else is calling it a statue. Uh, see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please, Mr. Edgerton, will you provide to me witnesses that have actually been coached instead of me having to do this all the fucking time? Because none of these witnesses seem credible, given the holes in their stories. Please begin the cross-examination. Okay. So I have to time it correctly, though. And I, th I think it's weird that she actually... He said something about, huh, they're calling it, they're still calling it a statue, but she specifically called it a clock. Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Oh my god. Right. This is my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Oh, I can go back. I didn't know that. I honestly didn't know I could go back. That's fantastic. Okay. All right, I'm going to try this again. Because I'm still not sure... This has something to do... This is absolutely correct to use. But it's will the game actually acknowledge that it's correct to use. Your Honor. Statement contradicts this evidence. God damn it! Alright, fine. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. That's what you, I mean, that's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun. How would she know that it was a fucking clock? Objection. Fine, we're gonna do it. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. There's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Look, another person in the much in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. That's irrelevant to all of this, but whatever. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know how you know this was a clock? Knew this was a clock. Uh. Oh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. That is not. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Also not true. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Ray. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murders with these questions before. Also, 
kind of irrelevant. Well, only once. Objection sustained. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you may you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? <laughs> yes, I heard it say the time. Oh my god. So you've been to the law offices of, of Faye & Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Faye & Co. where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. You can easily have heard the clock. No! No! There are no, 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 that's fucking ridiculous. No, I'm not satisfied. Thank you, good lord. I, I was really glad I didn't have to be... I'm glad I didn't have to actually choose an option there, because that would have been asinine. No, your honor, I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because it was hollowed out. Is it because they took the batteries out? clock isn't talking right now. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly? Just, just take a look right now. Oh, you anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Well, that's unnecessary. <laughs> we don't have to call her a waiting for the question. Fat. Well, Miss May? Tisk, tisk. Wanted to show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty, somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? It was after the witness heard the clock. Then there is no contradiction. Hmm. That's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? That's probably what law school told you. Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. Well, evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Take, Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order. Order. The defendant's cell phone? This this wasn't brought to my attention. Oh! Oh, so now we are worried about all of the discovery rules being followed. I see now. Okay. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? 
I saw that clock before. Um, what store is that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. We. Though the witness had seen it before, that would make sense. Are you kidding me? Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes! The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. <laughs> what? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> Oh, excuse is not on sale today. Oh my god, okay, stop while you're ahead. Oh, 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 mm. oh is she gonna go Ultra Instinct? Yes. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, whoa. Let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This, this is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 silly me. Uh, did I, um, like, lose it? Yes, I did. Tee hee. Wink. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? God, that face. Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. This April May, you knew the clock was a weapon because... This familiar territory. This May held that clock in her own hands. Mr. Wright, when was this? And she used it to strike the victim. What else? Order, order. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? April, May, you killed Miss... <laughs> I'm starting to think that wasn't correct. Say you heard of it's like... Yeah, because there was the trial, I guess. Like, the day before or whatever. When you struck it, the force of the impact made the thinker ring. That's when you heard it. You truly are a work of art, Mr. Wright. What's that supposed to mean? It was you who just proved the thinker was empty. Oh, God. Yeah, but she could see that it was a clock because of the thing on the fucking... The... the Where the timer would be. Perhaps you could explain to this poor misguided Mr. Wright that you were in the hotel at the time of the murder. It would be my pleasure. Yes way, Mr. Lawyer. Tee hee, didn't the murder take place at 9 at night? Gee, that's the exact same time I ordered some room service from the Hotel Bellboy. Incidentally, the Bellboy corroborates the witness's story. Well, how would I fucking know that? I didn't hear what the Bellboy said. There goes, she was not at the crime scene. Rock solid. Dude, see, I have a... <sighs> I told you. I fucking told you that my... Background would get the best of me. You would never be able to present that wiretap after stealing it from her room and say, oh, here's all the evidence you need, sir. This wiretap I illegally procured from her possession it plainly states, shows that she must have heard it, which again, how does she know? How do we know that the wiretap was from her room to the other, to the law office? We don't know that. That could have been for something else. Mr. Wright, you have just made a serious accusation against a perfectly innocent woman. Sorry, Your Honor, that didn't go so well, but if that's the case, how did she know the think it was a clock? Wait, Your Honor, I figured it out. There is one other way Miss April May could have known it was a clock. One way alone, and I have proof. Well, proof, you say? Then the court will examine your proof, Mr. Wright. How did the witness know the thinker was a clock? And how do we know that this is her from her room? 
we were never able to listen to it. You could have just picked that out of anywhere. Have a look at this. Ah, uh, that. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Rot, please explain to the court what this is. This April May? Isn't this a wiretap I illegally procured by snooping around in your room and stealing it from you? You were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Faye's phone, were you not? How can he prove that he did it to her phone? That she did it to her phone? Like, that could have fucking... Your Honor, this is irrelevant. No, it's not irrelevant. It's just, I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness had, was wired, was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Actually, he has to prove many things. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can! Anime speed lines! It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon uh, bleh, the proof that the victim said on the phone that the clock the weapon was a clock. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we see. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. This April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap a phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? Just say no, and the judge will be like, oh, well, can you prove that she really tapped the phone? You lawyer. It's no fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. Miss May, why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tip, tippity tapping or irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edward wants her to say. Yeah, that's what a fucking. You were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. Oh, this court does not condone the, the defense tone of voice. He has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? The time of the murder. I was in my hotel room getting room service. How could I have killed her? Ah, uh, nobody said you killed her. If you don't believe me. Well, I did earlier, but not now. If you don't believe me, just ask the bellboy. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come to think of it, think of something. Yeah, call the bellboy. The defendant would like to call the hotel bellboy. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy. Then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. I don't have to fucking stipulate to this! That's bullshit! And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? Better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. You haven't agreed to anything! You don't have to agree to that! You literally don't have to agree to that and say, No, Judge, I still think we should call the bellboy because we need to call her alibi into question. That's all- it does, the wiretap doesn't even matter! You just say, I want to call her alibi into question. And just say, yeah, you know what? We should probably bring it in because, you know, he's the one that said 
that she had an alibi, but the defendant has a right to confront those involved in the case, so... All right, I've got none to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Um, fool. You fell right into... You've activated my trap card. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well, the court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. So I'm holding my tray. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Kitwater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 on the dot, sir. I brought it to her precisely at precisely the requested time, of course. Oh, look at that face. <laughs> My eyes are not looking at her face. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Shit. <laughs> right, I'm ready, I hope. This is it. I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now. Maya will be finished. Because I never agreed to that stipulation in the first fucking place, because it was stupid! What exactly is it you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir. I check in guests, check out gu I check out guests. I clean rooms, I make beds. I even deliver room service, sir. I check Miss May in personally. Are you always so prim? Mr. Wright, that literally has nothing to do with anything. You will refrain from asking frivolous qu Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? <laughs> that was dumb. Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? Oh, God. Just stop. I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Him. <laughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? Nine o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. Precisely nine o'clock. Dude, add the f Whatever, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. Nine o'clock. Thank you! That's all I wanted! That's all I fucking wanted was you for you to say PM. How can you be so sure? Oh my god. Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought there. Oh, no, oh, bellboy, teehee. It'd be like, like iced coffee at exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on the, at a door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? You were sure it was, yeah, th this. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely, oh God. Yes, sir. It's an enduring mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with a um, an, an, an embrasser. What? Embrasser? Is that French for embrace? Oh. Well, fuck me. I don't know my French. It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. What? Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is that it? 
This disc, finally you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm. It was it was a bit tedious. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defendant have any something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay, this is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Bed making. Tell me about making beds that day. I was wondering what you were going to ask, but bed making a new low. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth, the witness will answer the defendant's question. Yes, well, it was quite like any other day's bed making. I changed the sheets, the pillowcases, and then I proceeded to make the bed. I had to bring pillows for two, of course, but they were quite light, you see. I see. Thank you. Pillows. For two? Bellboy, what did you just say? Uh, uh yes. Pillows are light, sir. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else saying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're not normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention if, if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. That's actually good. That's good lawyering on Edgeworth's part, but you also fucking don't say that. Oh, my attorney. Well, it's not his attorney, but oh, yeah, the attorney told me not to answer unless it was, I was specifically asked. Oof! I've been betrayed! You fool! I've done it. I won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Mm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... The man who checked in with Miss May. Oh. Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. That actually was never established. Yet Miss May her Well, I guess it kind of was because she didn't really answer. But it wasn't actually established. Yet, Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, my, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it were too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Oof! I actually stabbed him. Upstart, amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. En enough. The court acknowledges the defendant's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. A am I understood? Yes. <laughs> your yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of my affair. Court is adjourned. Mr. Rush, you were amazing in there. R really? Oh, she's so happy. I think I might be your, new, your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. Huh? Then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Do you mean the one whose ass I just handed to him? Huh? That face of his. With his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sends shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so, you know he was literally just trying to put you in prison. So what happens with me? I get to go home now? Um, well, 
No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. You don't have a lot of help. I get a great... But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to I'm going to find out what ha what uh, the, I'm going to find out more about this man. You think he was the one who? Maybe so. Sis, don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have- Wait, 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 wait. You want us to look into this more? But we still gotta come into court tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. I'm surprised she wants to talk to me. She looked like she wanted to murder me not too long ago. Well, hello. I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dang place as this. It's really quite moving. Nod, you stinking lawyer, I hope you die. How have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May. No, not really. Oh, no, not really. There's something. <laughs> you got me talking like that now with Miss May. Uh, no, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Right, we're out of court now. Much better. They actually did a really good job with her face. <laughs> it, it, it is off-putting, to be, to be sure. Absolutely like Azer. I was just thinking of his uh, 2001 New York stand-up the other day, and I got kind of sad but also happy. That was the first time I saw a stand-up, and I'm like, raunchy, vulgar stand-up can be really funny. And it was also shocking to me because all I knew up until 2001 was all the kids' movies that Robin Williams did. I didn't even know he could... Say those words. I didn't know it was possible. It was hilarious. That's not how he would want you to think, though. He wants you to remember the good times. I mean, that's definitely the type of person he was, right? Unfortunately, there is nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Oh. Oh, oh my. Ouch. Touche. I think, okay. Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security guard. Yeah, he looks so afraid, doesn't he? It doesn't look like he's even paying attention, which is kind of a problem because she might jump over the table and attempt to strangle me. So, what is it you wish to ask of me then? <laughs> For starters, how'd you get to be so totally whacked? About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. Come on. Okay. No way, Jose. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Okay, so I don't have anything for her that could get her to talk yet. Let's move. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I do, if I dare say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewater's rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as a hotel where the murderer would use the wiretap. We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It will be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa. This man hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are our guest. Please, let me know if there's anything I can bring you. 
about, about Miss Maeve. Oh, her? Huh? Sir, not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I have the same ilk. We both carry the sense of danger. I also like to live dangerously. Here we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Hmm. Okay. Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely! And on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel, Murder Manor. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea set. Is there anything here? Looks like Forensis is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe is nowhere in sight. At least really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. I suppose it can't hurt to take a look around, though. Are some of the files missing? Nah, I'm imagining things. Shouldn't you look a little closer? I don't see a reason why we'd have to go back here. But let's do it anyways! Hey, anybody notice anything? That disgusting painting isn't there anymore. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... Isn't it, isn't it a very memorable painting, anyhow? Something's written on the pencil on the back. DL6 Incident Exhibit A, DL6 Incident and Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Isn't that their mom? Perhaps I borrowed this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. Encouraging theft to aid in your trials since 2000 and what, four, five, six? I don't remember when the first game was released. Quietly added. Look at this fucking guy. Yep, this is the murderer. Only a, only a psychopath would, would do his hair like that. And then give you a straight smile like that. Oh, I can only take one? Yeah, give me that one. I'll take it back and show... And show, uh, what's his fuck? Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about to write an affidavit swearing that that's him? An affidavit? This guy is way too excited about this. Yes. Well, sure, why not? Why not? Yes. I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. Actually, well, from henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. You again, can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. You don't just have spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. Oh, that does it. This case is done, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> That's funny. Have a look at this. Look, I've said several times, I'm not telling you. Ah! Where did you? Ha <laughs> ha, reaction. This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. Oh, no, that's not right. Nice try, Miss Cooperative. Do you have proof that was him, hmm? Yeah, proof. Show me proof. I'm so close. You have a look at this, and please, don't worry, don't bother tearing it up. I have copies. What's that? Bellboy's affidavit tells us everything he saw, such as the man you checked in with. Who was most definitely this guy? Now I'm getting somewhere. Okay, okay. She's vulnerable now. I should be gentle. This may. It would be easy for me to hand this affidavit to the police. If they get involved, wouldn't your boss be even more incon inconvenienced? 
All I want to do is have a little chat with them. You won't tell me? Is that all you have to say? Yes. If it's so easy for you to get the police involved, then why don't you? Somehow I think you're not up to it, hmm? Show them a little kindness and they jump all over you. Uh, the opposite effect of what I hope. Uh, I'm not really worried about it. He was so close. Damn it. Why would you discard that? You would keep that for court. Sound of water coming from the shower. Money making, money making, I got the money making blues. Someone seems to enjoy washing the showers. Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Whoa, you again. Um, hello, Mr. Grossberg. That's attorney Grossberg for you. Well, well, you are quite the thing, my boy. Excuse me? The trial, the trial. He was there? Reminded me of myself when I was a youth. I guess something got passed through Mia? But down through Mia, maybe? It brings back memories, it does. Uh, the days of my youth. Like the sense of fresh lemon, you see. I apologize. I, it was all a bit too much for me, my boy. Seeing you today, I, well, I. I appreciate the reminiscing, but I'd much rather you gave me some information. So you came to see the trial? Yes, yes, I did. Something was bothering me all, all last night, you see. I couldn't get a week of sleep. Really? What was, what was that? Well, you see, it's just me and sister, that poor girl. But the way, I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things have gone poorly for that girl. If you're that worried about it, why didn't you offer to defend her? I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. Uh, right. All right, Mr. Wright. No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem to be troubled about something. Maybe I can find something that inspiring him to talk. The other day, I'm sure there was a big pretentious looking painting on that wall. Pretentious looking? Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, where did it go? Ah, uh, yes, well, I got rid of it. Got quite tired of it, thing, really? I uh, sold it, you see. Yes, that's right. Sold it? I'm not sure I'd buy that. Wasn't that painting rather important to you, sir? Something happened. I don't see how to say you're your business. Please speak no more of that accursed painting. I've written. I. Uh, this? Excuse me, I was wondering about this photograph. Look at this photograph! Where did you get that? Every time you do it makes you laugh. How did his hair get so purple? <laughs> and what the hell is up with his part? That's just, his hair is god awful. I borrowed it. No, I stole it. Well, give it back at once. Mr. Grossberg, tell me about the man in this photo. He may have been in that hotel room with April May on the night of the murder. Do you know something about him? Anything? Mm, very well. I'll tell you what I know. However, you didn't hear it from me if we follow. I follow. That man is Mr. Red White. Mr. Miss April May and Mr. Red White. He's the president of Blue Corp. <laughs> Mr. Red White is the president of Blue Corp. You get it? <laughs> Colors? Yeah. Red White. Hmm, what a stupid name. Blue Corp. They're something like a detective agency, right? They're information pros. They sell information, you see. Sensitive information. Despite his name, Mr. White has the blackest reputation of any man in this country. Search him across him. Watch what you say. You wouldn't mind him digging a pretty dirt on you. Hmm. Selling information. Sounds like blackmail. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Hmm, I suppose. Mr. Red White, at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. Even if April May couldn't have done it, he could have. Time to take action. Photograph returned. No, I must ask you to leave. I need to think about things at home.
the surreal decor? Please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the? Your name? What's your name? I was just inqui- Inquirably? I didn't know that was a word. I was just inquiry asking the title that you go by. Um, right. Attorney Phoenix Wright. Inquiry? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I've intimidated you with my giant task of vocabulary. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official? My business dealings bring me into contact with the elites of the elites. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with the wordily challenged. Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yipes, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Miss May is an employee of Miss May, Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct, she was my secretariat. What a shock it was to her that what she has done. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed! She has paid to answer phones, tapping them as knots in her job description. She does gather information for us as a part of her duties, but I assure you we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable it is ineffable that she would do this. Sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. Yeah, absolutely. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place and where I am at any given time, apparently? My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. Wright, <laughs> the dead bellboy stated on record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter, the bellboy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. I mean, raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh, police, the courts. To me, they are mere toys, playthings for my amusement. What a company's blue court. Oh, excellent question. We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future. You might say we are the future. Sell information. In just 10 years, I've built this business up into a grand office you see now. Well, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, why you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabolistic, is it not? That's one I've never heard before. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? A big painting on the wall over there. Hey, when did you get that painting? Hmm, no idea, I forgot. I've seen that painting before, yesterday, in fact. Why do I find that painting here today? Mr. Wrong, was it? I feel like taking a shot of something after that one. Good Lord. Right, yeah, yeah, right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh, a lawyer? No, my feeble friend, a mere lawyer. Worth nothing, so sippo nada. Just like that sore excuse for an attorney, Grody Burger. What? Ugh. Is he kicking my ass? He punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do? Eh? Charge me with assault? Assault and battery, actually. Charge away, I welcome it, for it is you who will be found guilty of what, being assaulted? Heed my exposition, the police, the courts, they all do my bidding. So you say, but I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't, I don't expect you to understand, it is a world beyond your comprehension. You came here for my, from Grody Burgers, I presume? Mr. Grossberg's, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you? Perhaps you explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. 
There's nothing more to discuss. Oh my god. What is this? I'm not gonna lie. That's fucking baller. <laughs> grotesquely over the top. Oh my god. Special good try prize. The words judges and special kind of stand out. He probably strong armed them into giving him something. This is spectacularly narcissistic. It's so narcissistic I can't even be mad at him. I'm just impressed. Welp, I guess that's going to be a thing. Oh, I don't think he's noticed me standing here. What is he doing? Just sniffing the air? Maybe I should clear my throat? Ah! Grumble Jehoshaphat! Oh, you! I've never seen that spelled before. Interesting. What's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Yeah, I assume I'm going to die because I'm sure you ratted me out. You rat- I mean, I'm not seeing now yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him that much is clear. So I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh, boy, oh, gee. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Oh, I with it, my boy. You see, it's just... Mr. Grossberg, sir, there was a giant painting hanging right there the other day. Was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp, Red White's office. So you noticed. I suppose I have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected, you say? Yes, and I know what it is. Your lovers. Blackmailing you. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail? I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Very well. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this off my chest so I can probably rest easy again. After all, you are me as understudy. Perhaps it was fate? What's he talking about? Mr. Bright is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels at finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been playing them for 15 years now. 15? Yeah, that's a long time. All because of the 306 incident, as you may have guessed. Name on the back of those photographs. As you suspect, I could not stand to play some Maya because of it. Might would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for you to tell you this, my boy. But the rest of you may right when we die out in part of it. Possible? Why? He has information on everybody. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. Doesn't seem like Edgeworth would be the type of person that would be bought, though. What? They are both unable to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than a wait of many years. Many, many cheeseburgers. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than, sort of, than the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium, a spirit medium. Medium. Her name was Misty Faye. Faye? Indeed, she was Maria's mother. She had been investigating a murder at the request of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a pro. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. Yeah, but the police shouldn't have went to a spirit medium in the first place. I did all I could for her. In the end, cleared her from wrongdoing. That murder case, however, were made themselves to this day. That case is the GL fiction. Well, why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The GL fiction medium was top secret at the time. It made sense the police didn't want people to know them using a medium. They couldn't let people know. Okay, so then who the fuck cares if she failed and they were like, you're a fraud. They can't tell anybody. So they can't spread, ru like, rumors about what happened. They look bad. But one person found out. I, I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It was an embarrassment to me now. I see. Because I talked to police from Mark far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who killed them out. Of course, White heard about it. And he came to me. Well, this time, the offer was blackmail. I see. Mike controls the law of this county if she sees fit. Yet if you would still challenge him, have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. 
you may have recorded something of what you found. Well, should I look at? Oh, whoop. Oh my. Wait, I get it. He thought he was involved in these suicides. If I throw them all to, I can use these newspaper clippings. It's not the most disturbing one. The faint, I have tarnished the fate, leaving only these words my mother's vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who had sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold that information to the press. Why did Mia suggest that Maya go to Grossberg, though? Then that's weird. It sounds like she had a reason to hate the man. This parasite. Who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is. Record stops there. So me and Grossberg. Found this in Mia's files. So she was investigating Red White. If you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. That not no. That's not gonna tell them fucking anything. Oh, there was a suicide. Yes, there was. We suspect that it's white. Based on what? I launch you, persistence. Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself with my fists, but it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. You try my patience further. I feel a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. Wait, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then, one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. This concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. It's Mia? She had a file filled with articles like this. Every, every one of them was labeled with a single word, white. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. You were blackmailing Blackmail? Not just him, either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all the suicide cases that me investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What is a bizarre accusation? What is he supposed to say? Yes, you're right. Turn me in. Mr. Wrong, what is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, no, no. I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Secretary's office. Hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I just saw someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. You're wrong, Mr. White. Excuse me? What I should be doing now is going after you. Just what are you insinuating? Mia was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. Wright. You did it. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Oh, sir, one moment, please. What, is that you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fay case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why not? I thought you said you didn't want to go to the court. Quite tude. Quite tude. Wait, quite tude? I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. 
He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? 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 Are you even listening? The, ex the executioner, the hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer man? What? That's the word. This isn't one of those. Chief prosecutor, I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police now. I did not tell you, Mr. Wrong. You are a mere lawyer. As was Miss Mia. How dare you? I'll point the finger at you and you'll be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they will <laughs> make you look competent. I feel faint. That, uh, did that come to you? Reporting, sir. Ah! Butts! Harry Butts! Right, actually. Phoenix Wright. And my friend's name is Larry. Oh, right. Sorry, pal. Butts is that murder, right? Jesus fucking Christ. I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me. The prosecutor will be in on it, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right, Mr. Wright. Oh, Maya. Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Ha, huh, no, I'm afraid we switched places. What? You mean you... I explained what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy because before he's satisfied? My mother, my sister, and now you. This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Um, well... Alright, you can be my defense lawyer tomorrow. All right. Huh? Leave it to me. I am me a sister after all. Lawyership runs in our blood. Wasn't it ghost powers that ran in your blood? I'd better run to the bookstore and pick a copy of Law for Rookies. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? I'm kidding. It was a joke. No way. No, really, I was kidding. But thanks. It's good to know you're on my side. There really isn't anything you can do for me anyways. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay, then come to the trial tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may change, yet with crime it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days of- What?! Oh, that's horrible! I've been around for a seven-day trial, and there are definitely trials that last longer than that. Almost all finish in a day, mostly with a guilty verdict. That's fucked up. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. The true culprit of fearing as, appearing as a star witness. This is it. Tomorrow it's me or him. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Ah, oh, Phoenix, look! Ah, Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth? There was seems a call from the chief prosecutor's office yesterday. I was told that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What? Does White have the judge in his pocket too? So you're saying I'm going to be guilty, end of story? I won't do anything to get my verdict, Mr. White, anything. Why, why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocence? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All I can do is, all, can, all that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I made that my policy, Edward. You changed. Hmm? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any f special treatment, Phoenix, right? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait! The defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not. I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. This would be about the only situation I'd ever defend myself. Otherwise, you don't do that.
Squatton is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're, you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement. As the details of the events are already quite clear to the court, today we will hear the testimony of a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask his Edgeworth wise witness and testify before? It's like he already knows why. If anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. Wright is a busy man, and besides... Oh, he's a busy man! But he can't be bothered to be brought in and tell us who the murderer is. At the time, I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Ah, so you were incompetent, is what you're saying. Again, my sincerest apology to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. That would be enough. Now, I don't know what the right to substitution is in Japan, but in the U.S., you would have the right to get rid of this judge, if you, especially if you thought ahead of time that he was going to be biased. Great, he gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Ren White to the stand. Just enter for a You wish to know the title of my personage? Oh my god. Uh, your name. Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear. Do my lo lo locutions confuse? Name. These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. <laughs> I am the CEO, or to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there? Hem. I tell you what you already know. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your testimony. I can't rip this guy's testimony apart. I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho ho ho! Bling bling! I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Let him have it, Phoenix! Let's see, it's about nine, I believe. I was quietly peru perusifying, uh, that's reading, to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-heeled man attacking, attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She, too, was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you testified, then I'm afraid the defendant is- Oh my god! Pump the brakes, motherfucker! Very well, defendant- Uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination? Yes, your honor. How do you know what time it was? Because I'm always absolutely perfect, you know? No, 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 you're not getting away with that. You are so mistrusting, Mr. Lawyer. So, what was the proper term for secretary again? Anyway, Miss May ordered room service for 9, 9 p.m. It happened soon after the room service arrived. That's what Miss May said, too. True, the bellboy who brought the coffee saw Miss May. But he testified that he did not see you at the time. And this is your concern? Silly lawyer, Miss May received the coffee outside the room. Of course, he could not see me. He would need x-ray vision to pull off something like that. Tell us, what were you doing at that time? I was quietly perusifying. By window, you mean the one directly across from Fanko Law Office? Correct, that is the only window you see. 
And there you were reading papers? Correct. The Gatewater is a businessman's hotel, and I'm a busy man who had business to do. And I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Hold it! What's a bedlam? <laughs> Please tell me I was exactly correct, and he's gonna be like, What's a bedlam? Must have been when you attacked, I assume. We see. Continue. Rise, I turned to look at the building across the way. So you were reading your papers until you noticed that sound? But of course, I am no snoop peeping out of, out of windows at night. No snoop? Yeah, right. You made a career out of snooping. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Spiky-haired? What you just said directly conf conflicts with Miss May's testimony. Miss May clearly stated that the assailant looked like a girl. Always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lion. What is your eyesight? 20 bling. Counting both eyes, 40. 40, don't add them together. I think the witness is trying to say his eyesight is good. Hey, who says the judge on anyways? Yeah, you're not supposed to. And what did you do then? Called Miss May over when she too was surprised, of course. What was Miss May doing at that time? She had just finished watching a soap opera on the TV and was weeping openly. You know she had been tapping the Fay office phone. Irrelevance. That has nothing to do with the case at hand. I cannot. I will answer the lawyer's bold inquiry. Miss May was acting alone and she'd have the phone of this Fay woman. You'd make a good politician, Mr. White. Oh, oh, I know. After all, I am El Presidente. Please continue. Victor, she ran away, but you gave chase. Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course. Comprende. I understand. That was... Oh, so... Oh. This is directly the opposite of what Miss May said. The defendant and the victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you can change your testimony to reflect this new detail. Objection! Wait right there, Mr. White. You've dug your own grave. Jesus, you don't need to fucking say that. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left, but that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated that the victim ran right. Oh, it is simple. You have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim here. The victim ran to... Oh, so the, they finally fucking used the floor plan. The floor plan. It's like, ran to the left... If the victim ran to the left, as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did see her run to the left, I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe you really did see the victim run left. He saw her run left because he's the one that fucking killed her. It was mirrored. So he, did so he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Both witnesses are telling the truth for once. Huh, I doubt it. Uh, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law office of Faye and Co., of course. I love how they're all like... <laughs> Who talks like that? Who talks like that? More specifically, he was standing here. 
Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. This is where he was. Look. When the victim ran for the door, he was watching it from this point to watch if to him it would appear she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. This is where the killer was standing. Order. I will have order. Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Rot, what are you suggesting? R Rep Skellion? I am no rap. We're not, no. There's no one's a rap scaling here. The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far fetched. Ho ho ho! You provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing. The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this, I apologize, Mr. Your Honor. <laughs> Might I be allowed to testify once more? Of course, I have no problem with people having to testify again because their memory does not seem to be clear at first. Good luck, you can't fix the broken testimony, buddy. At least you should- well, You can't repair impeachment, but it's very difficult. She ran to the left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the ghost, she first ran to the left. And then you hit her savagely, that is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm. That does seem to make sense. God, I hate this guy. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. What do you mean, first? First? That is what comes before what happens next. You do speak English, right? Please sit back, relax. I will try to use simple words for your benefit. First, she ran to the left, and then... I didn't hit anyone. Now, now, Mr. Wright, there's no point hiding things from this court. I'm not hiding anything. The prosecution requests that the defense refrain from interrupting the testimony. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Why is he mad at me? Well, you already know why he's mad at me. What do you mean, ne oh my god. You fucking moron. That's all you need to know, Mr. Loy. As I said, she turned and made a desperate dash to the right. Oh my god. But it was you. Mr. Wright, if you claim that it was not you, then show us proof. That's not what she said she saw. So each of you saw different parts? Absolutely, that's right, of course. Let me pick up that annoying phrase. Anyway, moving along. Objection! Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a 10 minute break. Yes, yes, quiet. That's ridiculous. The witness is confused because he's lying. I emphatically request there be no break, Your Honor. That's... Yeah, we want justice. Die, die. Don't let him get away. Rabble, 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 rabble. Very well. The witness would care to revise his testimony. The crowd's on my side. No slipping out of this now, White. Mr. White. Oh, okay. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard the thing fall. Other window? Yeah, the next moment I saw Miss Mia run to the left. 
The killer, you attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then she turned and ran for the door. Then you hit her with a single blow. Hmm. So what happened, indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it is hurting. Deal with it. Sunglasses. This is almost over. You heard that thing fall. What? Wait. No, there's there's only one window in that room, isn't there? What other window is he talking about? Oh, that that glass light that that glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Yes, very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White. Huh? What? You're saying you saw the glass light stand? Yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. Sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. The light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. I don't know, change. The light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. The floor plan suggests that he sh shouldn't have been able to see it. Objection! Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen the light stand. What? The stand broke into pieces when it fell. Ooh. Just by seeing the broken pieces, you would have no idea it was a light stand. So tell me exactly what, uh, what, when was it that you saw the stand? Answer the question. It, isn't it obvious I saw the stand before it fell over? So, you saw the stand before the victim was attacked then? C correct. That would be no problem, right? Hmm. Big problemo. There's a big problemo, uh, I mean problem here. What, what problem is this? Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the glass light stand through the window from the hotel before the incident occurred. Correct, that is so. It's conclusive, defin definitive, undeniable, unimpeachable. No, it's impossible. You couldn't have seen the stand. What? Why couldn't he? You have proof? I sure do, Your Honor. The person in the hotel could not have seen the stand before it fell over. Look at this. These are the floor plans of the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well... Note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White? What do you have to say to that? Uh, 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 you lost it, T. Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards as a glass light stand. So when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. The only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Oh wow, that was actually funny. He bashing his head against the fucking... Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor, I... I... Miss Mia! Yeah. Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Well, that's far enough, Phoenix Wright. What? Uh, I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you were pla that you placed the wiretap. Ooh! That was brilliant. That was fucking brilliant.
Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. At this point, he's fucked. So, and your case is then fucked. So, really, admitting that he placed the wiretap there is significantly less bad than him admitting that he murdered or was there at the scene of the crime. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Faye. What does that have to do? Your Honor, the question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by whom? Or whom? No, you wouldn't. Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Mrs. Faye's office. Am I correct? Uh, co correct. You are most correct, Miles. Give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Fay and Co. law offices. That is what I saw when the cursed lights. I saw that cursed lights. But again, it's a matter of if you're a jury, doesn't he seem incredibly untrustworthy? And as a judge, I wouldn't trust the word he fucking says at this point. Now nah, I'm confused. Please explain to the court what this all means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the, seen the stand at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like you to believe that Mr. White had, was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to that office well before the murder took place. It's not a fact until the court determines that it's a fact. He could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed to be baseless for the baseless conjecture it is. <laughs> Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. Ahem, leave it to me. I feel faint. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fanco law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. And here, I'm actually not sure. Hmm. So you saw the stand before the night of the incident. And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over, by the sound? How could they hear anything if the window was fucking closed? It's never established that the window was open. Correct, that is right. I see you very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine. What am I supposed to do now? Luck, Phoenix. Like, you're fucked. Press him for now. Wiretapping is bad, yes. That's a serious offense. Oh my god. Unless April may knew the details of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Unidentified fingerprints were several days old were found in the fan coal offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. I know Edgeworth. He's already run a check on his prints. Oh my god. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the fan coal offices. Why did you tap me as phone? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. I would disagree with that. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. Are you kidding me? Judge could order him to... I don't think I've pressed him here yet. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a boat... Butacious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. I don't remember what they said the receipt was for. Right. No, I wanted to. But all I can do is present. They won't let me see what's on it, which sucks. 
Don't tell me I've run out of ammo. Miss Tisk, I'm afraid that's as far as you go, Mr. Wrights. The time has come for you to admit defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. Phoenix! Phoenix, over here! Uh, that's it. Phoenix, over here! That's Larry. Mia? What? Never give up, Phoenix. M Mia? Where? Where am I? Waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Still hallucinating. Ah, you're finally awake. Gah! <laughs> hey! Phoenix! Gak, there's no way to green node, friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Yes, ma'am. Oh. What? Where did that come from? Your... Maya? Didn't you know the Fey women have strong psychic powers? You accept your defeat in court. Except your defeat. It appears that was enough of a shock to awaken, awaken Maya's true powers. So Maya's channeling you, Mia? That's right. I am Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already run. You have that receipt. Why don't you just let me fucking look at it in the first place? Then I, we'd already be done. We'd already be done. I wrote that, not me. So, uh, so what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? Oh my god, who would have ever thought to look at the front of the receipt, huh? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. $1,000. Wow, big spender. Item. Glass light stand. Date of purchase. September 4th. <gasps> September 4th. That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the, the day before I was killed. So, now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It's the beginning of the week. It began in September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. It's the uh, before. Uh, I think the court is about to re reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant rather? Are you all right, Mr. Wright? Right, right? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to get back to. The cross examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on this matter? It doesn't matter what he says. I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well, I'll just do whatever you say. You may begin your cross-examination. Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? <laughs> You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The, the other side? There are other sides of receipts with blood written on them? Your Honor, would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Well, a glass stand and the date of purchase. Why, that's the day before the murder. You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Faye and Cole office at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Yikes. He is losing it. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No. Oh, it's impossible. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then that is all for the trial of... Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. 
What? No way he can worm out his way out of this one. Oh, wait. I forgot. It's Edgeworth. Dude, you haven't even done anything yet. Don't bow. There's a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. It does not matter. At this point, you can prove circumstantially. It's just the judge has to find it appropriate. There we go. I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There's no need for probing this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, of course he's going to say, Oh, yes, I, I agree with him. This can be done. If anyone is going to call Mr. White's trial, it would be me, the prosecutor. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm, I see. Objection denied. What? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. Good lord, there's another day? Oh, there's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sh sure to come up with or just make up something. After Mia showed up to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course, thank you for your time. The witness will the witness will stay. Wait, is this Mia? So the witness will stay. Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what's this? Your Honor, if I may, you're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. Well, I am trial on trial for fucking murder. I I have something I would like to read to the court. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. Stop! Desist! Halts! Please, stop! Make him stop! How, how did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here, right now, or else this list will be released to the press. I mean, isn't this already open in public? That's why there's so many people there? I confess I, I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss Mia with the thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. Oh, I guess I... Well, I see no reason to continue this trial. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. Yes, Your Honor. And this, even with you in the witness's pocket, I still managed to get out of it. I guess you could say that. Well, you knew how spirited it was. Well, this court finds the defense to him, rather the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, not guilty. Yeah, the press wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able, be able to avoid the, at least here they wouldn't be able to avoid the press. Because criminal uh, proceedings are li like this are public. That is all. This court is adjourned. Unless it's, you're dealing with the juvenile, then it might be closed. Yes. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again, but congratulations. You're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here is running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. Stay here longer than I thought. What? No, there's still so much to say. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Chief! I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix, can you come to the office tonight? Say, 9 o'clock? The office? I'll see you later. Chief! Mia! Being here, it's not hard to- it's hard not to think about that. You came, Mia. I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I came. Well then. I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? Wait, Mia? Well, you should see her face. Who's this? What are you talking about? It's me, Maya. Maya? What? Did I look like my sister? You look like you, you were her. I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Um, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. 
Lefty, Byron wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... Take care of, huh? She means the office, this office. Someone has to help with the new Wright and Co. law offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Faye, reporting for duty? Wait, no, on second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick, Maya here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Mia said that's what you, your friend Larry calls you. Nick? You know what this means? We're partners. No, it just means... Unless you're an actual attorney, it does not mean that. You know, when I think about it, it's Maya's fault I'm here now. Mia's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right in Cole office. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Oh, that's sweet. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here, watching. Right, okay, Nick, let's get to it! Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy, burgers! There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, time's wasting. Okay, wait up. And that marks the end of 